Hello everyone, and welcome back to another week of Sealed Only 1v1. And it feels pretty good going into this week because of course we are up a game, <laughs> which feels amazing, uh, but also a little nerve wracking because obviously we gotta worry about the crackback now. But you know, uh, all force and the starter deck in general perform really well. Uh, there's nothing like being able to swing swing uh, with security attack plus one at times. Um, it's pretty busted and helped us to kind of carry the game there. But I am starting to worry a little bit, obviously as we head into week two and we're able to open up a little bit more product. Well, this is starting to feel pretty linear already. Uh, if I don't have all force, for example, like in game two of last week, I can absolutely get massacred. Uh, and obviously there's the problem of just playing a giant game of chicken with Pete as well, and just waiting to throw out the mega at the right time. Uh, so basically I'm looking for an additional line of play as we start to open up the packs this week. And I do have a couple of interesting options. So option one for the big Vmon stan uh, like myself is to dig either in 1.5 or even in EX1 Classic Collection for a couple of these guys. So this Vmon in particular is really good because when you unsuspend once return, it nets you a memory. And obviously all force is really good at that. So, you know, with the extra memory, maybe we have enough to play out another rookie or if we can get a tamer we can pass turn a little bit more efficiently. Uh, and again, just, you know, with what we're looking to kind of build around here, just having access to more Vmons in general would be fantastic. But if we're focusing on 1.5, for example, then obviously this is the guy we're going for. Um, as nice as it would be to pull the Imperial Dramon Dragon mode out of 1.5, either the blue or the green one, this kind of synergizes more with what the deck is looking to do already, but with the whole like multi-swinging aspect of it, of course. Uh, and the big difference between this guy and the starter deck all force is that he evos for three. So, you know, if we manage to get a memory tamer, for example, we can just evo up into him, keep our turn. And then, you know, if we have some blue tamers that suspend themselves for their effects, we can swing, 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 potentially with security attack plus one and still do massive damage to Pete's board. So it's going to depend. Uh, I have to see what makes the most sense to open up. Um, but certainly, you know, we have a couple of interesting options to us available right out the bat. Now, before uh, we get into the pack opening proper, I do want to take a second to do what my exhausted brain could not last time and actually explain uh, some of the rules of the series. Uh, so you might be wondering, how many episodes are we going to do? Uh, well, we're basically going to whoever can win eight matches in total first. So, you know, obviously if I keep things up like this for the next seven weeks, it's going to be a pretty short series altogether, uh, but I have a feeling there's going to be a fair amount of back and forth. Uh, so eight match wins, uh, again, is what we're aiming for there. Now, to keep things interesting as well, uh, we do have some additional rules in place. So, for example, if you win like I did last week, then you actually get access to three bonus packs. So it's just a way to reward the winners for, you know, performing well, uh, lets you dig a little bit deeper or potentially open up some sets, um, you know, that have some nice stuff, but you don't want to dedicate all, you know, eight packs in my case uh, to. But if you lose consecutively, so for example, if I beat Pete again this week, then the opportunity to limit or even ban some cards will come up depending on, of course, how many times you lose consecutively. So for example, if I beat Pete again this week, uh, he might have the option to limit one of my cards to three. Um, probably this guy, <laughs> if, I was, uh, if I was him, but you know, potentially my Arrow Vidramon, which is the big enabler as well. Uh, and you know, if I continue to win beyond that, he can reduce this to two to one and then eventually outright ban it. Um, which would be bad news bears because let's be honest, at most I'm pulling one <laughs> of these if I get lucky. Uh, so we'll see. Um, there is actually, you know, some incentive for just not blowing through uh, and winning all eight all in a go. Not that that's going to happen anyway. I can hope, but uh, not the case. But anyway, now that you guys got a good idea of, you know, what we're doing here and obviously what I am looking for, let's just get this all out of the way. We'll crack open some packs and we'll see what we've got to work with this week. Okay, ladies and gents, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Altogether, we've got eight packs of booster set 1.5. Kelsa Breeze. Now, I do actually have three additional packs that I have access to because I did win the match last week. Victory packs, you know, pretty nice, uh, but I'm not sure on what I want to open just yet. I do have some EX1 in the desk underneath here, but I'm not sure if that's quite what I need to open up just yet. So we'll see what we get, and then I'm either going to 
pull out some EX1 in a second, or I'm gonna very quickly run to the game shop and try to grab something a little bit more interesting. Um, but either way, let's see what the packs give us this week. We are looking specifically for some All Force support, if we can get it, or some Imperial Dramon support, if we can get it. Uh, and thankfully, the pressure is off these packs a little bit because uh, getting the memory tamers we need is about to become a lot easier thanks to some upcoming starter decks. Uh, but hey, without further ado, let's just start opening these guys up and see if we can pull something workable. Uh, and I should say too, I'm not going to complain if I pull um, if I pull a memory tamer out of here anyways, you know, because that just makes the job way easier. Memory gauge, cool. All right, let's see what we got. We've got a Candlemon, Agumon, Angemon, Deathbray Blast, eh, Tankmon, Gazimon again, Aquilamon, Salamon again, Flymon, Minomon, Cherubimon. Ha 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 Okay. <laughs> first pack, guys. First pack. All right. Well, I guess uh, I guess we know what direction we're going in. Um, if I pull an all force right now, well, <laughs> things are going to be very interesting. But let's just let's let's put that guy right to the side there. And uh, yeah, if this dude comes out of the pack right now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna laugh. Okay, let's see. Uh, second pack magic, anyone? We got a Seedramon, Psychmon, Marimon, Tialudomon, Arctic Blizzard, Garudamon, Not Palmon, Bastemon, Argomon, Gigimon, Ophanimon, and Mimi. Potentially usable, actually. Potentially usable. There's some interesting stuff you can do with Mimi in blue, but we'll see. Uh, Dragon Mode, can we? That would be great. That would just be fantastic. Uh, let's see, we got a Plasma Stake, we got a Geo Greymon, Cunemon, shout out to Pete. We got an Ikakumon, Gyromon, Bifrost, Lavogoritamon, Puppet Pummel, Gatomon, Zudomon, XVmon, and a Mega Gargomon. Something tells me Pete would really like to have access to this right now, uh, but not playable for us. Uh, but this is usable. Um, it'll go on top of any of our blues. Uh, if we manage to pull the jamming Vmon, then we can digivolve this guy on top and unsuspend after he swings uh, to hopefully protect us from Pete's bugs. So uh, again, um, potentially a usable pull right here. Okay, let's just power through here. All right, oh, and I am mangling the packs already, guys. Okay, get that out of the way. All right, we got Antillamon, Rapidmon, so much green stuff. Geo Greymon, Tankmon, hey, my boy Armadillomon, Cherry Blast, Gomamon, Flymon, Argomon, Valkyriemon, Salamon, and Rena. Okay, there's a little bit of all, all four supports. I'm so excited, I could barely get the words out of my mouth. Uh, Rena is fantastic because it's a searcher for RV Digimon, and of course, um, if we pull the actual all force, uh, it's particularly good for him because it'll allow him to restand when we suspend her. Still potentially useful. It is a blue tamer after all. Uh, it is a search, so it's like a really low rent Davis, but um, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Rena is usable. Uh, and I actually needed to buy a third Rena. I actually own two already because I'm building the other all force uh, on the side and preparing for the new one that's coming out of BT11. Uh, so this is really nice. That's just one one more card. I don't have to buy. All right got my boy Hawkmon Justice for Hawkmon. Oh, his armors are so bad uh, Let's see Mega Seedramon Marimon, Aquilamon, Papa Pummel, Terriermon, shout out to Pete, Minomon, Mallow, Myotismon, and Testament. Okay Let's crack this one open and see. Can we get another good super? I think we are due do for another one somewhere. Now the only issue with this guy here is that until I get a Pyildramon, uh, he's evoing for five, which is brutal. I am gonna be passing turn, uh, which means Pete can swing over him. So hopefully we find something in here to help out with that. Patamon, Urukenimon, Vorvomon, Agumon, Hawkmon, Lightning Paw, Sabredramon, Zubamon, Clavis Angemon, Nyaromon, Metal Greymon, cool, but that's Silphimon. Oh gosh. 
not great. I think we are running out of steam here, but let's see. We've still got two packs left. Uh, and hopefully with a little bit of luck here, ugh, we can pull something. Come on. All right, we got a Dokugamon, another Cherry Blast, Peelmon, Lavorvomon, another Gomamon, Penguinmon, Blossomon, shout out to Pete. I know you really want one of those. Black Godomon, another Ray of Victory. Hey, another Demi Vmon. Okay, that's usable. Uh, this is potentially usable too. Rise Greymon and Brave Shield. Not playing yellow, not playing Greymons, so not super useful. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what the last pack gives us. Uh, I, can't, I can't recall if there's a Pyildramon in this set or not. Presumably there is if there's an Imperial Dramon. So maybe we'll get lucky and we'll pull him. Oh, okay, there's something very shiny back there. Let's work our way to it. Tururimon, Volcanic Flare, Commandramon, Magna Angemon, Betamon, Clockmon, Howling Crusher, Airdramon, Security Digimon, that's interesting. Vanilla Zudomon, Delicate Plan, okay. Dark Despair, Sarismon. <sighs> That's a cool card from like a bazillion formats ago. Ah, but we can't use it. Even, even if we get in some of the Imperial Dramon support, it's just, it's not really worth it. You know, we're not gonna have enough green stuff in there to really make use of this guy. Uh, sorry, Pete, that, that's definitely a card for you. Um, but I guess you're lucky it wasn't one of the supers I was looking for. Uh, so, you know, all together, some interesting stuff. Even this actually could potentially do something for us a little bit down the road. But I think overall, if we put the bird aside, it was, uh, it was a pretty good haul. Do you know what? I think I do want to crack open the EX3. So I'm going to cut away for a second. I'll stack these up and we're just going to see if we can go balls to the wall and pull some Imperial Dramon support out of EX3. All right, guys, so uh, obviously <laughs> we pulled the Imperial Dramon, uh, like I mentioned. Um, I was very keen to dig into some EX1 support. Not that, uh, since obviously there are some Imperial Dramon lines in here. Uh, we do have our bonus packs for beating Pete last week. So with some luck, we can get a Pyil Dramon, uh, even a Dino Beamon, uh, the Stingmon that evolves from blue. Hopefully out of these three, we can just get some extra cards to support the big dragon over here. Uh, that is what I'm really hoping for. Um, and you know, thankfully there are a few good blue cards in general in here as well, uh, particularly a Wergarurumon that I really want to get access to because uh, it basically just helps us get to the all force win condition a little bit quicker. So yeah, let's just uh, dive in, see what we can pull out of uh, EX1. Uh, and you know, it's just nice. Um, <laughs> nice to be opening something that's not booster set 1.5. Uh, that's going to feel pretty good. All right. Well, we definitely mangled whatever was at the back. <laughs> uh, figures. I just, I cannot open packs for, well, to save my life. Let's just, let's keep this peachy. Uh, so we got Gomamon, Metal Mamemon, Salamon, Demi Devimon, Garudamon, Hagurumon, Lilymon, Metal Edamon, Garurumon, Analog Boy, and Inframon. Okay analog youth, I should say. Potentially usable. Uh, again, it's a tamer. It's really nice. It's extra consistency. Uh, and since we are desperately lacking uh, in, well, Davis, um, I think this will actually work out pretty well. So let's just put him to the side and see what else we can fish out of here. I'm having a bit of a night with opening these up, guys. I apologize. Booster packs are hard. Uh, okay. Ooh. And I got one stuck to me. All right, we got Wizardmon, Palmon, El Tyrannomon, XVmon, fantastic, we needed that. We got Karamon, Stingmon, Demi Devimon, Patamon, Greymon, Lilymon, Fight for Your Pride, and Leomon. Okay, uh, so helpful, very, very helpful. Uh, the rares kind of sucked though. Those definitely sucked. Oh, guys, I'm gonna have to just start carrying scissors, I think. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm doing these, this is just, this is not good. I'm so, I'm so paranoid too about mangling the guaranteed supers um, that come in, uh, come in the boxes. It's just, ah, it's, 
It's not good, man. It's not good. Uh, okay, but thankfully we did not mangle the guy at the front. Uh, that is a relief. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't bad. Uh, we got Zudomon, we got Gardromon, Ikakumon, that's potentially playable. It's blue at least. Togemon, Hello to Pete, Agumon, Patamon, Greymon, Icewall, and Melga. Oh my god. <laughs> no! My god! Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I was kind of hoping this was the Imperial. I really, really wanted that to be the Super Imperial, but I will take that. Oh, thank God I did not destroy that. Oh, all around, such a good haul. Uh, and again, I wish this was an Imperial Dramon. I really wish this was an Imperial Dramon, even though the the blue Imperial Dramon out of EX1, it's a little iffy because you need to have a free Digimon in play, but oh, I'll take it. I will take it. Pete, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you this week. Um, all right, I am going to stay up a little bit late -ter than it is now. It's crazy late now, as it is. You can tell I'm rambling. <laughs> My English is failing me. Um, but basically, I'm going to see what kind of deck list I can throw together in the next 10 minutes. We'll wake up tomorrow morning. We'll get ourselves ready, think over the crazy decisions we're about to make. And then hopefully we can take Pete on uh, and secure a second win second win <laughs> uh, this week. All right, well, uh, I had some big pulls this week, and even though they are pulling the deck in a few different directions, I still think it is worth it to toss them in. So our deck is obviously going to look pretty different this week. For starters, I can finally dump the vanilla level 4s in favor of a few new toys. XVMon, specifically the EX01 XVMon, adds a ton of aggression to the deck, allowing me to swing early with jamming, which is always fantastic. I'm not sure how useful it will actually be since Pete does have access to cheap blockers at 5000 DP, but I only really need to chip one security before All Force effectively locks in the win with its big double swing. So we'll see how this card does at two. Speaking of XVMons, I'm gonna splash in the other XVMon I pulled, the one from 1.5. This won't get a ton of use, since I don't currently have the jamming Vmon, but there may be an edge case where I need to swing over a rookie and then evolve up unsuspended to protect that Digimon. So, you know, as a one-off, I think it's fine for now. And then I've got Ikakumon. This deck doesn't really strip sources, but I know Pete is running a lot of rookies that he wants to hard drop, so this might help me play a bit of board control with him, and it's also got a solid 6,000 DP, so it can pretty easily beat over his Kabuterimon blocker, which is pretty big. And it is good to note that Pete is fond of hard dropping the Kabuterimon, so being able to just swing over it and then maybe clear the way for all force, uh, it's too tempting not to toss this in. Warping ahead to the Mega lineup, I of course had to splash in Metal Kabuterimon. This deck loves to draw cards, so I can potentially evolve into this for 3 or even 2 thanks to its first skill. This will help me edge out Pete in the tempo department, and it'll give me something to swing with when my deck boss is feeling a little bit shy. And then I threw in Imperial Dramon because... why not? Now, I'm willing to admit that it is actively a detriment to the deck with its 5 cost evolution, but you know, damn it, I just need to put my intentions out there into the universe and see if it attracts a bit more support. So we'll give it a shot, and at the end of the day, it can still probably beat over Hercules Kabuterimon, so uh, good enough. Option-wise, I'm of course adding in Ice Wall because the card is limited for good reason. Until we get access to Memory Tamers, this is basically a guaranteed turn ender, so you know, I would be a fool not to run it. As for the Tamers, Rina is an obvious inclusion since she searches a good chunk of the deck, with most of them being Vmons or Vdramons, and the DP buff will help me at times as all force goes for those big swings into security, especially if I don't have the Egg or the Gabumon underneath it. Amumi is a little weird, but hear me out, Pete really messed me up with his options last game, so this will help me eke out a little advantage on that front. Or I can use Mimi alongside Hammerspark to net myself two memory, at least on the first one, which is basically as good as having a memory tamer at this point. So it's a bit of an edge case here, but I'll drop it in, uh, and at worst, 
I can use it to memory choke Pete to one the same way he does with his two drop Izzy's. And finally, Analog Youth is here for the extra consistency and the fact that it can help me keep tempo if my bigger Vidramons get wrecked on my own turn. This alongside Ice Wall could also help me cut Pete's turn short, so it's a decent inclusion for now. And hey, if I discard something I need, I do have the one off Vidramon Zero to help put some cards back in the deck. I know it looks a little weird now, but trust me, this is still an all-force deck. It still puts four security checks on the board like nobody's business. And while it doesn't have memory tamers, it's, um, it's workable. But anyway, let's jump into the actual match and see if this janky pile will actually perform. Heading into game one, Pete starts off with a Tentomon in the raising area, and then the first of what will be several two-drop rookies. Those Floramon are gonna give me a lot of trouble, believe me. For my part, I've got my favorite Vmon in the raising, followed by an Ikakumon. Basically, I'm telling Pete that if he's gonna hard drop stuff, I'm gonna punish him for it. And then I hard drop the less than amazing Vmon just to pass it back. Pete's obviously feeling aggressive, so he kamikazes his Tentomon into my security, and then really leans into the Rookie Rush aspect by hard dropping another Floramon. I see red and promote my Ikakumon, but thankfully I have just enough sense to evo up a Kordramon and get in the extra draw. I use Ikakumon's skill to swing over one of the Floramon, but I do forget to trigger the Vmon Inheritable, which is actually going to slow me down by quite a bit. Still, I clear a body, and then I can Digivolve Cordramon up into Aero Vidramon, of course immediately threatening the All Force. Pete starts rebuilding in the back, and then he swings with Floramon, clearing a Vmon and putting me down to two security very early in the game. He also evos up into a Kawagamon in the back, and my dumbass forgets to ask him what it does. He then goes up into the vanilla Okuamon, choking me at one. I need to catch up in the security race, obviously, so I swing in with Aero Vidramon, and then I clear up Floramon with Ikakumon. Finally, I make a pretty stupid play and decide to evolve up into All Force, fearing that Pete would just promote and swing over my Aero Vidramon. Pete takes advantage of this right away and brings up the Okuamon to slay my big shaggy boy. And then Pete tells me about the Kuagamon Inheritable, which freezes my All Force in the suspended state until the end of my turn, which is pretty bad. And to add insult to injury, he drops the Electro Shocker, bouncing my stack. I have no good options, at least right off the bat, so I start to rebuild in the back, and then I drop a pretty poorly timed Ice Wall, if I'm being honest, before I go up into Aero Vidramon to pass things back to Pete. He actually makes the best use of his turn, dropping an Izzy and then just swinging in. Thankfully, the Okuomon dies to my freshly pulled Metal Garurumon, but on the other hand, Pete effectively chokes me at one, and now has a Rookie in Raising and potential fodder for a hybrid. I promote and swing in with Aero Vidramon, drawing off of my Demi Vimon. This gets me a little closer to the big all force swing, but of course I take the risk of getting my stack bounced again, and, you know, just to dig for a Hail Mary play, I drop the Draclamon. Now, at this point, if Pete has the hybrid, he's got it. So I wait with bated breath as Pete promotes. He does swing, revealing the V-Tamer tie, which doesn't really do much for me right now. But with no hybrid coming down, he drops the surprise Dino Memory Boost to choke me at one again. Over on my side, I have no security, and with one memory, I can't even get up into a blocker because all of my blockers are level 5s. So instead, I just swing like a madman at security, losing my Dracomon in the process. But I do chip Pete down to 1, though I give him an Izzy in the process. But now, with a Vmon in raising, I have a chance of stealing the game back. So to finish my turn off, I evo up into all force, bouncing his Palmon off of the board and leaving him with nothing to work with, unless he draws into the hybrid. And again, he draws, and does not immediately slam down the hybrid, so we've got a chance. He starts rebuilding in the back, and then he makes his classic play of hard dropping the Kabuterimon blocker. I see my chance, so I promote Vmon and actually take probably the unnecessary precaution of evolving up into the winged Ramon for whatever reason, and then I go for the big double swing with all force, making Pete block just in case, 
and then I use the Wingdramon to swing for game. Jumping into game two, Pete starts off and just builds up into a Togemon. I hatch and Evo the bad Vmon, then go up into X Vmon from EX1, which is, well, less than an ideal stack to say the least. Then I hammer spark and follow it up with a blue memory boost, nabbing myself an arrow Vdramon and sadly bottom decking quite a few good pieces. Now, from this point on, things basically devolve into a prolonged and very stressful game of chicken. Pete actually goes all the way up into his Mega, but he wisely keeps it in the raising area, lest I have an all force or maybe a removal spell. I don't budge my main stack from the raising area either. Instead, I climb up into Arrow Vidramon, crack the memory boost, and then drop Arena to help search for a few more pieces. Finally, I do go into all force, trying to provoke him into moving out by giving him a generous form memory to work with. Pete does not take the bait. Instead, he drops a Tentomon, nabbing another Tentomon off of its skill, and then he matches my arena with his two-drop Izzy. And of course, I get choked to one. I deliberate for way too long, don't move out, then I drop a Vmon, trying to bait out the big bug with a juicy rookie that it can suspend and then swing over. Pete does not take the bait. Instead, he drops a Dino Memory Boost, tapping my Vmon and refunding some memory with his Izzy. He does make a bit of a misplay here and trashes the Memory Boost right away, but you know, these things happen. And then he finishes by clashing his Tentomon with my Vmon and dropping a fresh Tentomon to replace his rookie. I continue to hide in Raising, choosing instead to hard drop a Dracomon for a bit more search, and then I drop the Ice Wall to choke Pete at 1 and hopefully buy myself a little more time. He just responds with a Togemon to choke me back to 1, which is fine, I guess. I respond by evolving up into XVmon and put him on 1 because I am a jerk and a coward. But finally, we see a little action as Pete swings in with the Togemon, which dies to my Imperial Dramon Dragon mode in security. And so sadly, I miss out on a really impactful reveal for my other big pull. And of course, repeat after me, I get choked to one by Izzy. Just, God damn it, Pete. <laughs> The game of chicken continues, and I just evolve up into Aero Vidramon in the active, trying desperately to just, just bait the Mega out. And finally, the big guy does come out to play, and he does Digiburst, suspending my Aero Vidramon and netting some extra memory off of his Izzy's. Then, the real terror comes down as Pete evolves his Hercules Kabuterimon into Susanomon. Yeah. He blows up my Aero Vidramon, and now I'm staring down a 15k triple breaker, which is just cool, man. Cool. After I stop pissing myself, I decide that I have to come out and try to push for game, because 15k triple breaker. I go for my big all force attack, tapping Rena to help clear any girthy threats in security, which I definitely need to do now that his DP ceiling is a little bit higher. And thankfully, I do clear all four checks. Then, thanks to the generous amount of memory that Pete gave me, I can drop a Dracomon and follow that up with a fairly risky Monzemon drop, giving Pete five memory to work with, but setting myself up with three bodies on board, one of which can swing twice. Now, Pete has a bit of a dilemma on his hands. I have three bodies to his one security, and all force is obviously enough to settle things on his own. Pete decides to go for broke, clearing three security checks, giving me a meanie in the process. He follows that up by dropping a rookie and immediately going into a blocker to stave off my attacks. And with just one memory left, he hits me with the Electro Shocker to take all force off of the board. Now, I actually get to tap Mimi here and give myself an extra memory as things pass over. And that actually gives me just enough memory to digivolve my Monzemon into all force, bouncing the blocker, which allows me to double swing for game. Well, that was a hard fought 2 0, but it is a 2 0 nonetheless. All Force is looking really good so far, and I almost think that this card can carry me for the rest of the series if my pulls can back me up. That said, Susanomon is an issue. Pete having access to a level 7 that can blow up anything on my board and swing for 3 checks uncontested 
is a real cause for concern, especially since the odds of me pulling my own level seven, yeah, they're not good. Um, I wish I had easy access to a level seven, but neither EX1 or 1.5 have a level seven that I can actually evolve into. I could crack open some Battle of Omni or even set 1.0 in pursuit of some, well, Omnimons, but the odds are obviously not in my favor because those are super rares, and those sets don't really have anything else that I can use, so I might just be burning my packs for a couple weeks trying to keep up with Pete's level 7. So obviously I have no good answer right now beyond trying to close out the game before Susanamon can come down and make a big difference. Um, but if Pete's luck with his one-offs is as good as mine has been with Ice Wall, I have a feeling uh, that that Susanomon is going to be a big problem going forward. And on another slightly concerning note, Pete now has the power to restrict my card choices since he's on his second consecutive loss. He could force me to play one less of any card in my deck, and I have a pretty good feeling that it's going to be either All Force or Aero Vidramon. Both pieces are essential to the combo that lets me swing for four checks over two attacks, and Pete is going to want to make it harder for me to reach that win condition. So if he hits either of them, that'll basically do the job. Maybe Metal Guru Ramon can help pick up the slack if Pete decides to restrict all force to three, or, you know, I'll have to lean into the Imperial Dramon support even harder. But either way, it's going to make things a little bit awkward on the Mega side, especially since there aren't a ton of good blue Megas that I can pull to kind of replace what All Force is doing for the deck. But on the plus side, uh, if shipping works out okay, I might have access to the Jessmon starter deck next week. And while that deck itself won't do too much for me, unless I just want to totally switch over to playing red, the promos that it comes with definitely will. I'm talking, of course, about Davis and Ken, the much needed memory tamers that will save me from, repeat after me, being choked to one. And hey, you know, we're gonna have some bonus packs next week as well, so maybe I can just get something interesting and it'll all come together and we'll pull a level seven and it'll all be fine. You never know. And with that, I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, ladies and gents, take it easy.